buddy. This is Oliver, always meowing for something. He usually wants food or something. What do you want, buddy? Oh, what he's looking at. Oh, there's a spider he found. I think he's frustrated, can't get to it. guys my jewelry area I pulled this out of my basement it's just a hook I had I'm gonna probably buy a jewelry hook that you put on the wall hooks um, for my uh, necklaces in the future but I figure you know use what you have um, you don't always have to buy stuff um, I would like to get multiple hooks so I'm not doubling up on my necklaces that I am. I don't have a lot of necklaces. I used to have a lot more when I worked in an office, but these are mostly just to wear on YouTube or if I go out. Um, so then I have this little setup here. I'll kind of pan out. So I'll pan out all over uh, all together. I'll just pan down. Okay. So there's an idea for you guys. Just if you find or have them in your house, these kind of pedestal jewelry, I mean pedestal jewelry, pedestal glass, um, what do you call them? Jars, bowls? Um, you can use them for jewelry. This is like my Christmas jewelry. And then this one I also had, I got this like free at a thrift store. This is just necklaces I don't wear very often, but I thought it looked pretty. And then these are my watches, my earrings. I mean, not ideal setup for the earrings. I still kind of have to go through and match them up. But that's what I have for now. And but I this is a built-in that came with our bathroom. So I just decided to make this area my jewelry area. And I thought it looked pretty good. What do you guys think? And this is what I have on the wall. I always like this picture. Just kind of fun art you could put in your bathroom. There's a clock I have in here. I thought that was cute. You know, you might as well make your bathroom fun. You use it all the time. So I like to put fun pictures and items in my bathroom just so I can enjoy looking at them when I'm in here. Hi, hey, buddy. This is Oliver, always meowing for something. He usually wants food or something. What do you want, buddy? Oh, what he's looking at. Oh, there's a spider he found. I think he's frustrated, can't get to it. What are you doing, guy? Oh, and I just got this at a thrift store. Laundry makes me a basket case. I think I paid a dollar for that. Um, yeah, I thought that was just fun. Another place to decorate is your laundry room. You go in there often, so you might as well make it look fun. Hey, buddy. Wanna say hi to everyone? Hello. Yeah, my laundry room is nothing exciting. But we put that shelf up there for the cats. And if you look at my Facebook or Instagram, I'm always posting pictures of them up there. It's just a shelf I had. It's actually backwards. You can see that's the way you hang it. And we just put it in the wall with screws. Oh, there he is. Oh, my cats love to get up there. And they love when the windows open. It's just right now it's cold. It's like 30 degrees. So John tends to open the windows up in the winter for the cats and I'm freezing and I'm like, they can wait till spring. <laughs> oh, he's looking at that spider. Okay, I wanted to show you guys something. This is a part for a vacuum that we ordered from a place called Parts Warehouse. We couldn't find it anywhere else that was inexpensive. It cost us $26, and it took about two months for us to get it because it was on back order. Then we get it, it doesn't even fit our vacuum. What happened to our vacuum was I accidentally melted it by putting it. We have these, see that wall heater? We have those, we have one in the laundry room, and I had the vacuum right in front of it. 
and the heat came on and it melted this part. So we want to replace it, but it doesn't fit. So we still can't use that vacuum. And we were going to return it to the company, but um, we would have to return it at our expense. And it came in a box, not this box, but um, I'd have to ship it back in the box, which makes it over a pound, which means priority mail. And, or UPS was even, I went through a pirate ship. The cheapest way was UPS, $10. I thought we paid 26 for it. So we're getting a $16 return. I might as well just list this on eBay. So I did just list this. Right, here's the listing. John, my husband, John, is he got on the website and found exactly what we ordered. I have it at 20 bucks. We need at least 19 bucks back from it, but that's my listing. Just listed it like five minutes ago. Things like this, it probably won't sit very long. I think it'll sell very quickly. There's really none other ones for sale, maybe one other ones, but a lot of them are for different vacuums. So I'll let you guys know if and when this sells. Just sold this on eBay. You guys might've remember for a previous video, I believe I mentioned when I got this, um, maybe a month ago, it's an adorable little lamb playing a banjo and he's musical. You hit the switch and he plays, thank God I'm a country boy, but not in the voice of John Denver. I did have somebody email me, say, is this in the voice of John Denver? I go, no, I don't know whose voice it is, but it's not his. And it's just a really fun, quirky item. I sold it for 18, so I'm happy with that. I'm kind of bringing you down to my basement kind of show you what it looks like now. This is all my inventory. These are the bags that I used to take her down sometimes. These are all my plush. So I'm gonna be looking for that item that I sold. Thought he'd be on top, but these things do get moved around. I will find him. But yeah, this is where I keep my bras right in here and my scarves and my belts and my um, curtains, drapes, that kind of thing. I got some scarves in there. Um, miscellaneous stuff I've listed. Again, this is my plush. This is just my work table, which is always dirty because of this ground. I put bins on here and then the bins get dirty because they were on the ground. So this is my tote skin Tote skin, tote scan <sighs> labels. And I put the one next to it just so I could quickly, instead of looking for like G4 D A M, I could um, do one. And you can scan it from the tote scan app to find out. But I just, I'm a visual person. I like looking and knowing that's two, um, you know, three, four. So. Yeah, I've got it pretty good, well organized. I'm still inputting these into Tote Scan. I am on number 16. It's vacant because it's up in my office. So look, I've got 17, 18, 19, 20, which is turned the wrong way. Uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 20 and 29 hardly have anything in them. So um, that's good. But yeah, I'm slowly taking my time and going through everything in each, like I have 16 right now. I'm go through everything in that bin, look it up on eBay. If it hasn't sold within a year or two, I'm getting rid of it. Um, but what I do is I tweak the prices. If it's been around for a few months, I lower the price. Just try to get it sold and I tweak it. Make sure the promotion's at the right rate and it looks good and the pictures look good. My cats are running around upstairs. I can hear them. This is my um, cats, my calves. Hey, I've done really well. This thing used to be overflowing. So I sold quite a few. These are just hats that are not baseball caps. And I try and cover this stuff because this is what happens. Things fall onto that dirty ground. Now I gotta clean that up. These are my blankets. You can see. And these are like some purses. I have like three bins of purses, I believe. Oh, the cats are running around. How funny. Oh, <laughs> they're playing. This is something I'm selling. 
kind of miscellaneous. But these are like purses. And I sold a few purses. Pillows. Haven't sold many pillows. Don't pick up pillows, you guys, unless it's like something that you look up that um, is very desirable. Otherwise, they just sit and sit. And I've had these things for quite a while. This is a golf bag by Callaway. A golf shoe bag. I've only had it a couple months, so I'm hoping that's all soon. See another pillow that fell down. I try. Okay, this is my pea tote. This is all, you know, golf clubs, tennis rackets. Got a poster. Um, this is miscellaneous, just big stuff. Down there is another game tote. And then here's my overflow. Um, A through H is on the floor there. And then here I've got J, K. Oh no, I got I, J, K. And then it got the L, M, N, O. And O is not full. And then this is P of like older things. See that cupcake thing got dirty. Oh, don't like having a dirt floor, but. Oh, look at all the cobwebs. Woo! I still haven't cleaned those up. I have one to deal with it. Um, but, and it's kind of a mess here, but I know pretty much what's in here. This is just bigger items. I don't want to put in totes. I just kind of put in there. A crystal ice bucket. And those are like um, plates or something. And I got kind of a mess down here. But these are my pictures right there. Games. I got three totes of games. That's another one. And then, again, this creepy back area. Shockingly, it doesn't bother me to come down here, thankfully. That's the ceiling. And then that's another area there. And then this area is overflow shoes. I have got to get a shoe rack or a bookcase. But a bookcase would work. I mean, I do have them. You know, I do have labels on them, and I know what's in each one, but... This is crazy. When I go to sell shoes, I've got to lift these up. Not good. So if I get a bookcase or a shoe rack, just this size in this little area, that'll work great. And that's just miscellaneous stuff. These are boots that I have for sale. The person before left this microwave and they left. I think this is empty. Hey, I could probably use this box for shipping. I just realized that. They did leave some box, which is not, I think that's, Let's see, is this empty? I'm kind of scared to look in here. I haven't looked in here. No, I need, oh, Christmas lights. <laughs> Probably just leave that. And then that's the back area. Um, it's kind of a mess here. This is not our stuff. This was left here, or it's a previous. Ooh, ooh, gosh, that's really cobwebby. I don't want to go in there. And then the previous owners were nice enough to put everything in that room. So that's all their stuff. The rest of the stuff was from the previous owner, which we don't need. Look at the electric refrigerator. They left this old lamp. Um, I said, I'm going to grab this box. This other stuff is ours, and we're going to be putting our Christmas stuff down here. It's still in our entryway. Ooh, look at that water damage. Ew. But this is my, um, these are my coats and sweaters and sweatshirts. This is what I had set up for whatnot, and then I decided not to do whatnot. So this came down here. It works really well. Then I don't have to put them in a bin. They take up a lot of room in the bins. So now I can just, if I sell a coat or a sweatshirt or a sweater, I just come and grab it. I just sold one today, so I was down here grabbing them. So then I put the extra hangers there. This is just extra hangers. That's ours, but this was left from the previous owner, and so was that. And so was that. <coughs> Sorry, you guys, I still have my cough. And that's a mess. But, look, I'm just trying to scroll not too fast. I tend to scroll too fast. Ooh, what is that? It's so creepy. It's like you can't see it with your eyes, but you see it on the video. Ooh. No, just this is like my extra boxes here. And that's a big mess. I don't want to show you guys that. Head on back up. And these are our stairs. I know I took you guys here before. I just kind of wanted to show you again. And 
I've got a little over 1,200 items listed right now. So that's my 16 bin. And this is me going through all of these, looking them up on eBay. Again, looking at how long they've been listed, if they have any watchers or views, and then making a judgment call whether I should be donating them or giving them away um, or keeping them in my inventory. So that is going to be one of my next projects. I hope you guys enjoyed my little vlog there. I wanted to mention a couple things. One is I did um, mention earlier, show you that I was listing something on eBay that I had purchased and um, it was just going to be better for me to sell it on eBay than to return it. So I wanted you guys to consider that. I'm sure you, like me, order things from other places, whether it be eBay, Amazon, or a website, or Walmart, etc. cetera. Um, maybe you get that item and you don't like it, or it's gonna be, um, for whatever reason, you wanna return it. And maybe it was a heavy item or an item in a box, and you're gonna have to return it at your expense. In this case, that vacuum replacement part was going to cost $10 to ship back for $16. Well, I might be able to sell it on eBay for $20 uh, because I couldn't find any of the ones like that. Now, that's something you will have to research. Uh, look up the item on eBay. If it's flooded market, yeah, you're better off returning it to whoever you purchased it from. But like if it's an item like I, I didn't find any others like mine except for maybe one. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to sell that. People are always looking for replacement parts for things. We were looking for one. So um, just consider that. If you, you know, I've ordered things on eBay and for whatever reason I didn't like it or I couldn't use it or change my mind. Um, sometimes I have returned it, but other times if the item didn't cost very much or 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 it's going to be more benefit beneficial to me to sell the item I have done that um, I think it's better if you don't have to do a return to not do one you're better off listing it on eBay um, if after you do your research that this is the item that's going to bring you money you could profit off an item that you purchase just like when you source so something to consider you guys also want to talk a little bit about customer service I have mentioned this before but I um, wanted to bring it up again because I started thinking about my past um, um, instances with customers on eBay, the good and the bad ones. I want to share a little bit about them and kind of suggest what I think you should do when it comes to dealing with nasty customers or even nice customers on eBay. Um, I haven't had a lot of nasty customers lately. I have had some situation where they got the item and wasn't what they wanted, or maybe it broke. I mean, I wrap my items so well, my breakable items, but you know, the post office is known for throwing their items around, putting them on different conveyor belts, different um, trucks, to say box um, trucks. Yeah, um, so even though you pack the heck out of something, it still could break. So sometimes um, customers are just angry about it. I'm really disappointed, I'm really mad, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm always very kind to them, very apologetic, make sure my tone comes across. Because one time I was dealing with a lady like that and I, I guess I wasn't apologetic enough. So she goes, I don't like your tone. I think I'm going to report you to eBay or something. And I'm like, oh no, you misunderstand. Well, honestly, I was kind of frustrated with her. But I realized you just got to hold that in. You cannot let the customer know if you're upset with them or frustrated or or whatever you've got to let them know that you're very sorry you could even tell the reason you know why that happened anyway just be kind to people even if you know you don't feel like it <laughs> you know i've always had most of the time i've done very well when i'm very kind to them even if they're angry i really diffuse their anger and they come back say oh i'm really sorry you made it right i appreciate you getting back to me promptly and apologizing and wanting to make it right and then i've turned a angry customer into a happy one and then i get good feedback i mean feedback can be important if you get the nasty feedback fortunately ebay allows us once again to reply to our feedback we were able to do that when ebay first started they took that away 
I think it's because um, maybe the uh, sellers were replying in a nasty way. I don't really know, but really glad you could reply again so you could explain your situation, explain yourself. So, um, I did have a situation a few years ago when John and I first got married. I guess it was like five years ago. We were living in a condo in Beaverton, Oregon. And this lady received a clock. It was one of those clocks with, um, you know, most clocks have like a, a glass face or plastic face that protects the hands. Well, this one was just an open face where the hands were exposed. And I did my best to protect that with shipping. When she got it, she freaked out. Uh, I guess they were broken off and she just went off on me. I mean, she just really just started cussing at me, saying, well, horrible seller and blah, blah, blah. And, oh, I was really upset. <laughs> and I wanted to get back at her and just say, lash out at her and say, hey, you know, I don't deserve that, blah, blah, blah. But I bit my tongue and I swallowed my pride and I was very nice to her and apologetic. And she actually came back with this really long apologetic email. She said she had been getting a lot of, um, I guess she'd ordered a bunch of things for eBay and they weren't what she wanted. Um, and so she was just upset. I was, I was like the straw that broke the camel's back. So she was just lashed out at me. But because I was very kind to her and apologetic, um, she she uh, regretted her actions and she apologized to me. So no matter what you do, that's one of the worst things you can do on eBay is to lash out at your customers, to say anything nasty to them or mean or just anything that could be misconstrued as mean or just, you know, um, anything but being kind and respectful and professional. Um, just always want to treat your customers the best, like how you would want to be treated. And, um, you know, sometimes I get lonely customers. I had this girl the other day, she bought something from me and she kept emailing me. Oh, I can't wait to get this, da da da. And she goes, um, can you ship it sooner? And I'd already shipped it. I said, oh, I shipped it two days ago. You'll get it tomorrow. So then I get a little nervous about those customers because I think, oh, they're going to get it. And they're going to find something wrong with the item. And this was an untested radio that I said was untested. And I thought, oh, I hope she doesn't get it. It doesn't work. So now she wants to return it. But she actually got it and loved it. And she sent me a message. I love it so much. Thank you so much. And I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. Great. I'm so glad. But she wanted to have a back and forth dialogue. And she's like, can I send you a video? And I'm like, oh, no, thank you. But have a great day. Um, those kind of people, I understand they're lonely and they probably just want to talk. But I try and not have a lot of back and forth because, you know, I'm working and I try to make it professional. I'm not their best friend. I'm, I'm their, you know, I'm their seller. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'm always very nice to them, though. I did have one guy who who just wanted, I don't know if he just wanted to hit on me or have a conversation, but he's going back and forth, these long, drawn-out things. of, And I finally just blocked him. I I blocked him from buying anything from me, and, and I just ignored his message, messages. And he goes, oh, I'm so disappointed in you, Cindy. I thought we had a thing going. And I'm like, wow, this guy's delusional. <laughs> it was just... It was over the line. And so I just, um, you can't encourage that. Now I've had other people who we've had a back and forth and it's been very enjoyable. Like one time years ago, I sold these machine, uh, sewing machine parts to this guy. And he was telling me that he works on sewing machines for a living and that's what he does. Now that I always welcome, that's awesome. He's telling me on all about his background and what he does and what he uses this for and how he's so happy to get the item. That's what I really like. I love when it's, they tell me they really are joining this item. And this is what they're using for. And they maybe give me a little background of what they do. Like this guy was in the army and he was telling me these stories. No, I don't go on and on forever, but a little back and forth in that case, I think is, is great. It's really nice. And customer service is so important in not only in eBay, but any business. So that is my tips for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed my vlog. Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm gonna get back to work. 
and I will see you guys next time. Like and subscribe if you want. Um, you know, give me a comment. I always love hearing from you guys. Thank you for all the thumbs up and all the people who have subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate you. Take care. Thumbs up. See you later. Have a great life. Have a great day. Bye, you guys.